the wet plate collodion process means that you have to prepare a bunch of things well in advance of being able to go out and make the photographs themselves. So when I anticipate that I want to go out and make pictures, I have to mix up the collodion itself. And the collodion mixture um, or recipe that I use is one that um, takes a while for it to clear, which means that um, in order for me to be able to use it, I have to mix it and then wait about three weeks. The other thing that has to happen before um, being able to go out and shoot is I need to get the glass. And once I've sourced the glass from a, basically a glass shop in town, it's cut up into the right size. And then with the glass, I have to clean it. So I can't use it until I go through a couple different steps of cleaning and sort of polishing the glass. The day before I go to shoot, um, I have to mix the developer. In the morning or in the day that I'm going to shoot, I have to mix up the clearing bath, which is a sodium thiosulfate. And so collecting all the materials um, and throwing them in the back of the car or the van um, basically means I've got to get the dark box, plus its stand has to go in the back of the car. I've got to get my glass, the chemistry involved in making the images. I've got a timer and I've got a brush for getting rid of dust and I got my camera. Oh yeah, I need a camera and some lenses and um, the plate holder that goes in the back of the camera with the plate in it to expose it, a tripod. I usually bring with me two five or six gallon containers of water. I want the photographs to be of places that anyone can get to, to, to see for themselves, the place. And, and by virtue of the fact that I'm using this wet plate process and it's so cumbersome, you need to be able to access the place by car. It means that anyone can go to these rivers that I've gone to and access these viewpoints. First thing I usually do is take the dark box out and find the best location for it. And then once I've got the, um, the dark box established and, and I have a sense that I can get some good views of the river that are exciting with the camera, um, then I'm pulling out all the other stuff and sort of setting up camp. Um, then the camera has to get set up. Um, so once the camp is more or less ready, um, that's when I can um, you know, pull the tripod out, open it up, put the camera on it. Uh, start looking for prospects and views that I might like to make pictures of and then choose a lens and, and then start to get to work um, pouring plates and exposing. After I've poured the plate with collodion and it's sensitized and then it's put in the back of the camera and then exposed, I bring it back to the dark box and I develop it. And in the box, I can use a red light to see what I'm doing and as I pour developer on it, I can see the image come up pretty rapidly. And as it comes up, um, I can judge when I should stop the development or extend it based on how it's looking. The nice thing about the process is um, it's very immediate feedback. I get to see an image um, right after I expose it, essentially. I mean, these Once the plate is made, and it's cleared and I can look at it, it's still wet. And it has to stay wet until I can wash it. And I don't wash the plates on site because I don't have enough water to do that. In any case, um, when I load everything up, I've also been loading these tanks that contain, each one contains five exposed, you know, done existing amber types, still wet. And so um, th that goes into the, into the car, um, and it's usually the last thing to go into the car because it's the first thing I want to be able to take out. So I'll run running water um, over the plates for um, 10 minutes. So once the wash is finished, um, those plates get taken out very gingerly and put into dish drainers. And they're stacked in dish drainers and they dry overnight. The amber type is basically a very underexposed, very thin, unde underdeveloped negative. And that's the beautiful, weird thing about the amber type is um, if you put it in front of the black background, it turns positive. That's because not, almost, not much silver is actually there. Now, don't ask me why the thing reverses. I still can't figure that out. It's one of the attractions. I love that mystery. The, the traces of the chemicals that you can see on the plates of glass are essentially embodying um, the sediments that are moving through um, that river and settling on the riverbed as well. I always am trying as hard as I can to get it right every single time, but the process would continually resist. And I started really respecting it, but then it would almost start to uncannily 
mirror some of the forms being described in the photographs, some of the traces of the chemistry or the missed spots of the, of the collodion would start to actually mirror some of the uh, forms in the images themselves. It was, it was uncanny in the way that they would start to kind of work together. The complementary nature of the process and what I wanted to show about my subject merged. 